Hey everyone, so I recently had an interesting thought and I thought I'd make for a, uh, a fun video. So what I was thinking was, you know, if I had to start my portfolio all over again from scratch and I was starting with $10,000 today, um, what stocks would I pick? Um, so I have learned quite a few things in the first two years of investing and uh, with that in mind, I thought it'd be fun to just limit myself to picking five Canadian stocks, five US stocks that are in different sectors, trading at or below fair value because you know we don't wanna be overpaying for our stocks because that will mean lower expected returns in the future and higher risk to our money, which is not good. That's not what we're looking for. Uh, we want high quality proven businesses and they must all be free cash flow positive. So I'll be picking five Canadian, five US stocks, and just keep in mind that these are my opinions and you should always do your own research, never copy anyone, anybody's portfolio, don't copy mine, uh, always and consult the financial advisor should you need to. All right, so let's start off the list. So we're gonna start off the list with a Canadian bank and while you could make arguments for any of the Canadian banks, my pick would be TD Bank. It has the highest dividend growth rate of all the Canadian banks. They also have a very large presence in the United States and are making large acquisitions to grow it even more. It's very well managed and the bank is risk averse. So uh, they don't they don't make risky bets. So I really like that. You know, they're very uh, careful with their investments. And as a result, you should avoid any long term disaster with this bank. The second stock is ATD or Alimentation Kushtar. So this is a global convenience store company that has gas stations that can be converted to EV charging stations. They have a low starting yield, but have a monster 25% dividend CAGR or compound annual growth rate. So this dividend can multiply many times over if you just hold the stock over the long term. They also perform share buybacks to further your return over time. This is a great defensive pick with good growth potential with dividend income as well as capital appreciation. And the third stock is TELUS. So this is a great dividend stock with a nice 5% starting yield with a 7-10% dividend compounded annual growth rate. So that dividend will grow very nicely over time. The Canadian telecom space is dominated by only three companies and the barrier to entry will ensure very high phone and internet bills for Canadians for years to come. So they have very nice predictable subscription based revenue and they are diversified in healthcare and agriculture and they do not have a declining cable TV business uh, unlike their competitors, which I like. The next stock is Enbridge. So this is a way to play the energy sector without relying on the value of oil, like in a traditional oil and gas company, because this is just, you can think of it as a railway network for oil and gas using their existing pipeline infrastructure. The growth is predictable and it has a very nice starting yield of 6.33% with some dividend growth to come. The essential nature and legal and financial barrier to entry gives this company a unique moat that will feed your portfolio with nice juicy dividends to redeploy into either itself or other opportunities. And the final Canadian stock is Brookfield Corporation. So this is like an ETF that has no management fee. With this stock, you're invested in infrastructure, renewable power, real estate, private equity, which is basically just businesses not traded to the public, asset management, which is taking client funds such as a bank or insurance company, investing it at a good rate of return with low risk and collecting fees. This has outperformed the S&P 500 over the last 30 years, and I'm confident with the CEO, Bruce Flatt, uh, they'll be able to replicate this performance over the next 30. And before we get to the American stocks, I'd just like to ask you to just please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help the channel grow and it shows me that you like this kind of content and I can make more of it for you. Uh, also, if you're new to investing and you'd like to give it a go, feel free to use my link for Wealth Simple in the description below and you can buy any Canadian listed stocks and ETFs with no commission fees and you can get receive up to $3,000 as a reward for doing so and you do help support the channel. And the first American stock that I'm going to be selecting is Amazon. So this company has so much potential with AWS Cloud Services. It's the king of online retail. And with automation becoming far more advanced and prevalent in the years to come, should make Amazon a profit-making machine. 
It also has a very profitable and growing ads business that is very effective since the links to the ads directly go to a product page where you can convert that click into a sale. While the stock does have some uncertainty in the near term, I'd be very confident five to 10 years out from now in the future of this retail and cloud giant. The next company in the US that I would invest in would be Microsoft. So this company has a subscription-based revenue model, which means its profits are reliable and predictable. It's also threatening Google with its investment into AI with ChatGPT. So if you find an answer to a question you have while in Microsoft Word or Excel or just in Windows, why would you open up Google Chrome and search through Google for a, an answer? This could range to a simple recipe to asking it to write out a YouTube script or even a code for a script you're writing as a software developer. It also has tremendous growth potential with Azure, its cloud service, along with its acquisition of Activision, which is expected to happen soon to grow their gaming business and push it to another level. My next pick will be a, a REIT. So it's gonna be a real estate company called Vici Properties. So this is a unique real estate investment trust that has a monopoly on all the casinos in Las Vegas. It has inflation protection built into their lease agreement so they can raise rents in a high interest rate environment, which we're currently in. They also recently made an acquisition of some casinos in Canada. So it's a very interesting way to own some real estate while also playing defense against the high inflation we're currently seeing it also has a high starting yield of 4.7% and they do raise this dividend unlike a lot of other REITs. The next stock is Berkshire Hathaway. So like Brookfield, this is a very large ETF that has a stock portfolio, but it also has many businesses that it owns outright, such as Geico, Dairy Queen, BNSF, which is a railway company, and Duracell. It's being run by Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger who are excellent investors um, anybody in the investing game knows who these guys are. They are the best. And this stock will do very well over the long term with its incredible management. While there are concerns about Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger's age, since they're both in their 90s, uh, they do have very talented people that are working for them right now that should take over, uh, you know, eventually. Uh, so one of them is actually Ted Weschler. Um, so this guy is very impressive. He turned his own personal retirement fund from $70,000, he turned that into $264 million in 30 years. That's incredible growth. The final stock is Tesla. So this one has tanked in share price over the previous year, yet the company is still going to grow at an impressive rate in the years to come. They have a technological advantage over their competition. They also have a very high margin, which they can use to lower pricing and strangle their weak competitors who operate at very low to non-existent margins to achieve mass scale. They also don't have the massive debt that, that their competitors have and the major costs that they're going to have to repurpose their equipment to manufacture EVs, uh, further compounding their debt issues. Brand value is another thing. The consumer associates an EV with Tesla. It's the first brand that comes to mind similar how uh, to how when you think of a can of pop, you think of Coca-Cola. The proof of this can be seen after recent Super Bowls, when after seeing many ads for electric vehicles by other companies, uh, Tesla sees a massive sales spike. And then lastly, self-driving and the Tesla bot can disrupt the labor force and bring unimaginable profits to this company in the future. And here's how the portfolio looks according to sector breakdown. So. 10% in Insurance Diversified, which is Berkshire Hathaway in yellow here. Uh, real estate is gonna be 10%. So this is a uh, rental income from our casinos that we own in Las Vegas. So really cool here from Vici. Uh, Technology is 10%, so this is Microsoft. Consumer cyclical is going to be 20% of our portfolio. So we have 10% in Tesla, 10% in Amazon. Real assets is 10%. So this is Brookfield Asset Management. So. Uh, they own real estate, infrastructure, renewable power, so that's what we call them real assets. So they're real life infrastructure that generates value and creates uh, cash flow. 10% uh, in the energy sector for Enbridge. Uh, we have 10% in the telecom space for TELUS, but even they have some diversification uh, within that space, but you know, m m primarily a telecom play. Uh, consumer defensive, we have 10% as ATD, 
and then we have TD Bank uh, bringing in 10% for our financials, uh, which is just a pure financial play. Uh, so let me know in the comments section down below what your top 10 stocks would be. If you were limited to 10 and you had $10,000, how would you invest it? All right, have a great day, everybody.